Was the Roman Empire the instrument of God or the whip of the devil? That's the question in this episode of Theories of History. Hi there, I'm Jos Stein, and I make videos about theories of history in historical literature. If you're as nerdy as me, or if you simply like my videos, press that subscribe button and the bell, and we're good to go. In today's video, I'll be discussing this book, Seven Books of History Against the Pagans, by the Christian historian Orosius. Orosius was originally from Spain, and lived at the same time as his much more famous friend Augustine, at the beginning of the 5th century. In fact, Orosius was commissioned by Augustine to write this book. At the time, Augustine was in the middle of writing his great work, The City of God, where he explains the history of the world as a battle between two cities, the City of God and the Earthly City. The City of God consists of the people who believe in Jesus and who are destined for eternity. The Earthly City consists of the adversaries of God who are destined for hell. Augustine was focusing on the history of the City of God, and he wanted someone to expand on the history of the Earthly City. Enter Orosius. According to Orosius, he was instructed to set out in a book, concisely and in order, all the troubles caused by wars, the ravages of disease, the sorrows caused by hunger, the terrible events brought about by earthquakes, etc. etc. Why? In order to counter the so called arrogant wickedness of the pagans. And what was this pagan arrogance? Well, the immediate backdrop here is the sack of Rome by the Goths in the year 410. Non-Christian historians were claiming that Rome had been sacked because the Christian emperor Theodosius recently had put a stop to all traditional offerings to the Roman gods. In other words, the sack of Rome was a punishment from the Roman gods for the lack of proper offerings. So this is what Orosius sets out to disprove, and he does it in a fascinating way. I mean, the book must surely be on the top ten list of great rewritings of history. Whereas the usual narrative of the Roman Empire in antiquity was one of gradual deterioration from a glorious past republic, Orosius turns this completely around. Before Christ, the history of the world, and the Roman Republic especially, was not a story of triumph and conquests, but a tale of suffering, destruction and death. All the glorious wars and constant expansion of Roman power throughout the centuries were terrible times for most people, says Orosius. The distant past, contrary to common belief, wasn't golden, it was drenched in blood. The turning point, according to Orosius, came with the birth of Christ and the Emperor Augustus, who both brought peace to the world. Christ brought spiritual peace, and Augustus brought the Pax Romana, and it was no accident that this occurred at the same time. Now at that time, namely in the year when Augustus, through God's decree, had established the most secure and stable peace on earth, Christ, for whose coming that peace was a servant, and upon whose birth angels exultantly sang to listening men, glory to God in the highest, and on the earth peace towards men of good will, was born. After Christ, then, times were by and large much better than before, as long as the Roman emperors treated the Christians well. Those who didn't were duly punished. Whereas the Roman Empire before Christ had been a cause of much suffering, after Christ it was God's instrument for peace, well-being and the spreading of the gospel. In fact, the invasion of the Goths and barbarians in the 4th and 5th centuries should be seen as a blessing, for through their incursions into the Roman Empire, they were converted to Christianity, and the gospel spread even further. Hallelujah! And the sack of Rome? Well, that was just a mild breeze compared to past sufferings. Oh, and by the way, it was this chastisement of the Christian god for paganism, not the revenge of the pagan gods for Christianity. So there. Orosius' view of history would then look something like this. Here is the timeline of history, and in the middle we have the birth of Christ and world peace brought about by the first emperor, Augustus. Before Christ is mainly pain, suffering and death. After Christ has come to earth and brought peace, Times are much better, and there is increasing welfare, and the spreading of the gospel to all men. Perhaps the most interesting thing about Orosius' version of the history of the world is that it completely crashes with what Augustine, who had commissioned the book, developed in The City of God. Where Orosius saw the Roman Empire as God's tool for salvation, 
Augustine saw it as largely irrelevant to salvation history. For this reason, it's sarcastically been claimed that Orosius didn't understand a tithe of what was said to him by Augustine. Whether that's true or not, it was Orosius' view of history that would come to dominate the Middle Ages, not Augustine's. That's all I had about Orosius and seven books of history against the pagans. If you want to watch more videos about theories of history, I hope you subscribe so we can see each other again soon.